This is the Medieval Peer Inn by Funhole, an alternative brick-based model making company. They provided this set to me for the purpose of this review, so huge thanks to the Funhole for sponsoring this video, but I promise you that all opinions are my own and I would not have accepted this review offer if I wasn't genuinely interested in this set. Otherwise, what's the point? The Medieval Pier Inn is full of details throughout, but more on that later. This set took me about 12 hours to build over 2 days, it has 2,143 pieces and it measures 13.35 inches wide by 18.03 inches tall and 13.46 inches deep, with a retail price of $139.99 and it includes an LED light kit, one of the brand's main selling points. This is the second set I built from Funhole, so if you'd like to see my review of the retro wood cabin, check out the links in the description. Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room, the quality of the parts themselves and how they compare to LEGO, because I'm sure that's a question many of you are thinking, and I don't blame you, I had the same question when I first built a set from Funhole. Believe me when I tell you that the clutch power, the colours, the plastic are all equal to, if not greater, than LEGO's own. It's almost like these are just LEGO parts without their logo stamped on. They're that good. Next up, let's talk about one of this set's main selling points, the included LED light kit. The light kit really does add a lot, more so than I expected, and as this was only the second time I've ever used a light kit, I was still on the fence as to whether or not I think they're worth putting into sets like this. There are LED lights in all the places you might expect, from lanterns to fire pits, but also some perhaps unnatural lighting coming from the greenery scattered around the structure. The LEDs connect to a battery box via thin wires that are hidden in and under bricks and plates, for the most part anyway. My main fear of using light kits is having the wires showing, and whilst they are mostly hidden away, thankfully, those that are visible, I can pretend that they represent ropes, which would make more sense given the setting is a broken down ship after all, so I suppose it might work to their advantage. More to the point, they now have specialised parts that allow the wires to pass under without affecting the plate's ability to effectively clutch onto the others. These weren't included in the last set I reviewed from Funhole, so it's great to see them improving with each set they make. On to another thing I liked about this set, the abundance of details and nice part usage throughout. Even in areas that later get covered up or inaccessible, it made the build experience a little more fun along the way. Although this set is definitely more display than play. There are a couple of fun play features, you've got the raft, the winch, the trap door, all of which are pretty fun and add some life to the pier. These are more enjoyable when you throw some minifigures into the mix. The set includes four minifigures which honestly came as a surprise to me. I tried to avoid looking at too many set pictures before I began building and they were the last things you put together in the very final bag, quite literally. You have to assemble the legs to the hips to the body to the arms, you get the idea and their design is different to say the least. Given how 99% of all other parts in this set are practically identical to LEGO's own, it was a surprise to see how unique the minifigures were. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. After all, if the LEGO minifigure never existed, we'd have nothing to compare these to. They have their own kinda charm in an odd way. As I said, the inclusion is a nice surprise and for the size of the set, I think four is a good amount. Other nice inclusions were a sticker sheet and some tweezers to help apply said stickers, a brick separator and two very premium in look and feel instruction booklets. The complete package has a very high quality and expensive aura about it. Each bag was clearly numbered and I didn't notice any errors in the instructions, whereas I did spot a couple when I was building the wood cabin set. The pier itself is broken up into four main areas. We've got the dining hall, the kitchen, the bedroom, and up top they're even making wine. So maybe being called the Medieval Pier Restaurant would have been a better name instead of the Medieval Pier Inn, as there is only one bedroom, but you know, that's just nitpicking really isn't it? Now let's mention some of the not so positive things about this set. The lights and the wires make the medieval pier in less modular than you'd like. Whilst the set isn't made in typical modular sections for the most part, the upper floor is designed in a way to be removed, but unless you also want to disconnect the LED wiring it's virtually impossible. Which is a shame as it's hard to access the lower sections to pose minifigures or to show off different scenes. As I previously alluded to, not all of the wires are hidden enough for my liking. Most notably the ones underneath the deck in a storage area? Or is it supposed to be a brig? This is where all the wires on the lower section of the build converge, and whilst this area is not easily accessible, perhaps another flaw in the design, the wires ruin the look and feel of the scene. I defended them earlier by describing them as ropes, but unless someone has this place rigged to blow, they just look a bit out of place here. Adding to that, probably this set's biggest flaw is the fact that there is nowhere to hide the battery box for the light kit. When I was building the cellar slash storage area slash brig, it seemed like the perfect place to store it. And it was, for the most part. I did manage to slide it under there, but as you progress further into the build and add more details, it makes it harder to hide. By the end, it's pretty stupid to have it half in and half out, with the only option to have it completely out 
and viewed behind it elsewhere offset. Something I think many people won't like. And whilst it is nice that minifigures are included, the only trouble is there's no anti-studs on the legs, so it is hard to pose them for example on the bed or sitting down on a chair because you kind of just have to balance them and as soon as you move the set they'll just fall off. The build process is pretty straightforward until it isn't. You work your way up and then just as you think you're finished and only have a few bags left, you go back to the beginning again to add more details. I'm torn over this because on the one hand it's nice that when you think it's all over there is still more story to be told and more details to add. Then on the other hand, why not just put these instructions in the same section as when I'm assembling other things in that same area? It was pretty annoying to go back. For the most part, this set is pretty structurally sound, although the mast is by far the weakest link. It does contain axles to provide support within the bricks, but they're just not enough. It feels loose and I did knock it over a couple of times when working on and around it. I know most of this set is open and given what it's supposed to be, I think that's fine. Although for areas where it is supposed to be closed up, it should be exactly that. For example, with these wall panels that are hinged to allow easier access to the interior and provide better shaping for the design, they don't quite get flush with their surroundings. Sadly, I did have two missing parts. I double checked the bags and around the area where I was building, but they were definitely not there. Not that it justifies them being missing, but the locations where they were needed were not absolutely critical to the design or the structural integrity, so I guess it wasn't all bad, but not ideal. Thankfully, it's easy to get in touch with Bunho by using the included service card and they will happily send you the missing parts as replacements totally free. Lastly, another thing I found a little annoying was the main winch. It's a fun inclusion, but there's just no way to keep it wound up. You can raise up the cargo, but as soon as you let go of that mechanism, it will just fall down again. You could keep it raised if you cut the string shorter, then it also cuts out that play feature too. So, what do I really think about the Medieval Pier Inn? Was it a fun build? Yes, a little challenging at times, but it was the biggest brick-based model set I've ever made. Has it got lots of details? Absolutely, there are stories happening everywhere you look. There is no wasted space here. Is the light kit any good? Without a doubt, despite the handful of wires showing and the poor hiding spots for the battery box, the lights really add a lot of extra life and detail to the set. Are the bricks decent quality? More than decent, equal to or greater than Lego parts for sure. Is it worth the retail price? Let me answer this by asking you how much you would pay to buy a Lego set with this many parts and then how much extra you might spend to get a third party light kit. Your answer would probably be double this price at the very least. My answer is yes, I do think the set is priced pretty fairly. Do I recommend the Medieval Pier Inn? I do. It's such an impressive thing to look at and honestly I'm not sure where I'm going to display it because it deserves to be put on show proudly especially with the light kit turned on at night. And if you happen to own the Pirates of Barracuda Bay by Lego, then I think you've just found the perfect companion. I think I've summed it up pretty well, but these are my thoughts. What do you think about this set and will you be buying it? Tell me in the comments because I genuinely love to know what you guys think about this one. And as you might know, I'm usually a Lego City fan, so this was a little outside my comfort zone, but it did not disappoint. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks again to Funhole for sponsoring this video and if you do want to buy the set then please use our affiliate link in the description and you can use our promo code DailyWeeklyBuilds to get 10% off your order.